Good day, YouTube. 7th of January, 2021. And uh, this will be like the fourth video in this series on the F100 1966 that I picked up just uh, two days ago. Brought it in uh, 48 hours ago, literally. And uh, we got it running today. Put a video out on that today, just minutes ago, actually. We got wheels and tires happening. Um, front two are installed. I bought that set of wheels with those two tires for 160 bucks locally. The rear uh, tires, um, they may come in tomorrow. Um, if I would be real happy if they did. And then they'll get them mounted. They have the wheels for me. Um, they'll get them mounted and they'll give me a call. I'll go pick them up and put them all on to see what we got. So I got it up on the lift because we did get it running today. Um, it's got uncapped headers on it, and my ears are still a ringing. There is nothing noisier than a small block Ford with uncapped headers. Oh my! But uh, you know, for what you can tell, with uh, something without an exhaust system on it, it seemed to run pretty good. And uh, we sorted out the valve train issue. You can go find that episode and uh, see what we did. So here's your little tour of the underside as we get ready to do exhaust. So we've got a you know three inch uh, header collector right there. That one is in great position. This one over here, hmm, not so great. We're gonna have to heat and bend that over tomorrow. We're not gonna. It's a. It's in the evening right now. I'm just kind of out here at the shop because I'm waiting for someone to come look at a camper I'm selling. Um, so I'm gonna start making a parts list uh, to get the exhaust started. Um, so we need a couple of. Uh, header flanges to get the exhaust started. Probably route it through here. I'm trying to get the light where you can see it. Um, the old exhaust is still under here. I'll get that all cut out of here. Got a couple glass packs. Probably sounded pretty good. Almost a straight pipe out the back. Um, this is a two inch. So I'm gonna go either two and a quarter or two and a half and I'm gonna turn them out uh, in front of the wheels over here somewhere. Um, have future plans to build some side exits, um, but I'll talk about that later. Um, what's impressive is is the underside of this truck. This is a 50-year-old truck. Well, it's a 54-year-old truck. Um, and the underside of the truck is in fantastic condition. I mean, there's, there's no rust. There's just, it's in great shape. I just keep being impressed with this thing. Um, it's going to kind of be an all-around rig. Yeah, I want it to be a little hot rod. I want it to be my, quote, shop truck. Um, so it's going to have to do a lot of things, including hauling. And I was once again impressed. I get back here and start looking it over, and um, everything looks to be pretty good. And what do you know? It's got overloads. It's got overloads. So there's the perches up there, and the overload stack right on top. And it has a stiffener spring on the bottom. I don't know if that's factory or, or what, but there we go. So, um, might change my mind about lowering it um, because of that. It's not to say I would get rid of the um, overloads. I, I'm just not really sure the direction we're going. Let's get the wheels, tires on it, get it set down, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, so, gosh, I'm just... Happy, happy, happy. This is a, really one of the most fun uh, projects. I literally lost sleep over this thing just up at night um, thinking about it. So got some trailer wiring to sort out. I think some wires are shorted out too because when you put a turn signal on both of the indicators on the dash, come on. So uh, we got a ways to go. Look at the back of the cab. I mean, other than dirty, the paint's good. So this front of the bed here, it's kind of leaking water. It's got some leaves in there. We'll get cleaned out soon enough. So um, this video is going to uh, kind of document the building of the exhaust system. I've, I've done a few. I wouldn't say I'm an expert. I'm not uh, tooled up for it or anything, but uh, you know, it was going to be fairly simple, so I'm going to draw this out. I've already been down to the auto parts store um, to see 
what I can get, and they don't have a lot in stock, but um, they can get it from another store, or I can go to that other store and get it if I really want to get all this done tomorrow. Looks like we've got a little uh, output shaft seal leakage on the transmission. Not too bad. It just keeps the fluid fresh. Um, carrier bearing. Um, everything just looks so good. Um, again, the radius arm bushings do not need replaced. Um, everything seems super tight. The steering is tight. It is not power steering, but it is not hard to steer. Um, I don't see any leaking in the back plates. Um, the brakes work. I do need to just bleed them, put some fresh fluid through it. I made a mess with oil. I got some grease sweep on the floor because I adjusted the valves with it running today twice. So the things that are a mess will degrease the underside of the hood here up in an upcoming video. But uh, just giving you a little tour of underneath and then we'll get this exhaust system started. So uh, be back tomorrow. Good day YouTube. I think it's the 8th of January 2021 and we're working on the 66 F100 and today's the day we start the exhaust. We just will get it started so we can get it done. So uh, to start off the day I guess we got to get rid of the old exhaust. Sorry I'm trying to get the lighting right for you so you can see. But anyway there's the old dual exhaust, some glass packs on it and stuff. We need to just cut the hangers off and Get these out of here so let's do that uh, you're going to want to find a safer place to be okay sweetie
They didn't line that one up too good. We wiggle it enough. Show you what we're working with here and the challenges we face. So the header on the driver's side is coming out in a reasonable spot. Um, whoa. So I've got a board and I'm going to put it on top of the cross member, the back of the transmission, and kind of level that across there as you can see I'm about an inch low so I'm obviously I don't have the wherewithal to bend the exhaust pipe so we're gonna have to be creative when we weld the header flange to the pipe and do that at an angle and then maybe straighten it out with a pie cut or something I guess we'll figure that out as we go so this isn't gonna be just a you know plug-and-play situation because we don't want this thing to rattle so we need to come up inch and a half or so but the header itself is in a good spot and it's cleared the uh, clutch linkage and everything now on the passenger side houston we have a problem so we're already hitting the cross member um there's not even room for the three bolt flange and we still have that same height issue so i'm gonna have to get in there and heat up that header and pry it over um, a good inch or so and get clearance around the cross member. Um, so I guess that's probably next is to get that thing lining up. I went by the auto parts store and it just took them forever to find three bolt exhaust flanges. I can remember in a day when every parts store had these on the shelf. You could go in and buy your parts and pipe and build exhaust every week but things have changed um it it just took them forever anyway i got everything coming and be here later today um so i don't have the flanges in hand right now so let me uh off camera so i don't burn up my camera i'm gonna uh get the rosebud torch out some pry bars and some whatever and relocate that so hopefully the next view you see on this video um, will have some space enough over here to get that uh, flange pulled forward and to proceed with the pipe and we'll have to do the same thing we'll have to get creative when we weld the header flange to the first section of pipe and it's going to have to be at an angle right there to clear the cross member um, so we'll do that um, again, I am no expert. This is not a how-to video. I typically do not do how-to videos. This is how I'm doing it, and uh, this is what the parts I could get locally. I intend to just make weld everything and um, have it decent. Um, I'll show you where I want the exit. So what I got were, uh, I'm doing all this in two and a quarter inch. I think two and a half, I'm going to have a hard time keeping it reasonably quiet. It might just be too loud. So dual two and a quarter and I'm going to uh, come in this area here, the frame, and 45 and come down at an angle. And I want to be in this area here. So I actually have an idea down the road to build a, a box right here that the exhaust exits in. I always like that idea and maybe put a couple of uh, baffles or supports or whatever in just to make it look good. But just to build this box and then just come into the back of the box um, with the pipe. So coming at a 45 slant for now and then coming out past the body, then I'll cut it off um, so it's got a nice angle to it. That's what I want for today. Um, gosh, today I'm sounding real confident like we're going to get this today, right? Well, we're going to give her heck anyway. All right, I got to haul these pipes out of here so I don't trip over them and I'll get the torch out and the first order of business to get that header bumped over a little bit.
we'll check back with you as soon as I have made some progress. Some days it'd be nice to have help. Almost needed two torches to get the uh, all four tubes of the header hot enough at the same time to uh, get it moved over. So it was a challenge. It really was. Um, but we got it. We got it in a really good spot. Um, got, in fact, it's sitting basically where this one's sitting now. So it's, uh, it's real good. We can at least work with that. So I'm waiting for a couple hours for my parts to arrive. My um, collector flanges. And then we can get this uh, exhaust system started. In the meantime, I went through and cleaned off all the Zerk fittings and got this thing uh, light, greased up. I checked the 90 weight in the rear end and the transmission and it looked like it had just been changed and it was plenty full. There's a little bit of seepage out the front seal, but you know, it didn't hurt anything. Um, had the Zerk fittings on all the uh, universal joints. And on the slip yoke, yeah, I put grease in that sucker, I'm telling you. She's going to fly everywhere. Instant undercoating. <laughs> All right, I'm going to um, maybe go grab lunch. Me and Autumn Bear. Autumn, you want to go get lunch? Want to go eat? Yeah, Dad, I do. She likes french fries. So we'll go get french fries, okay, sweetie? And then we'll be back and we'll do our work there, okay? Okay. Okay, here's the exhaust system plan. So the headers are here, you know, left and right. Um, I need about 24 inches total to get to the 24 inch muffler. These are nominal figures. This is just for parts ordering purposes. Um, the overall length of the muffler is actually 25 inches, which is fine. Um, right here, I got to remember I showed you, I got to take that serious kick up. Um, so we'll figure that somehow or another. This will all come together somehow or another. Um, so I need about two foot six to where I want the, uh, muffler to come out, but I changed this from a 90 to a 45. So we're going to kick these at a 45 somewhere in here and come out at an angle. I wasn't sure if I could get them. Um, but they got them, so we went with 45s. So I like that look better, and then I'll end up with a kind of a slash cut instead of a square cut. And then if I ever build my square outlets like I'd like, um, I think they'd fit better and look better. So that's what we got. So I got a 10 foot stick of um, this is all out of two and a quarter, so two and a quarter inch exhaust pipe. And uh, here's the rest of the parts. Got a couple hangers. Um, finally today i um, got my uh, you know collector flanges I got two short pieces because I think these will work well um, I didn't need to buy two 10 foot pieces of exhaust tube we got a couple of uh, two and a quarter uh, thrush glass packs and the uh, 45 so I think I have all the parts I need you know we might need some fittings or figure something out I don't know um, again I'm not an exhaust guy just uh, gonna put this thing together best I can um, and get it fit. It won't be beautiful, but uh, that's why they fit under the truck, right? All right, I'm gonna get started fitting stuff together and fiddle around and uh, I'll bring you back when I got something meaningful to show you. Okay, we're starting to kind of lay this exhaust out a little bit. I do got the flanges bolted to the headers, the one I worked so hard to get out of the way. And we got uh, hopefully enough clearance there but uh, as you can see if I hold the angles up there you know we got to do some bends and we got to do them quickly so I've marked how far this thing should slide in whoops excuse me slide into the collector and then I need to bend you know in this area this being maybe center of the bend as close to here is practical um, you've got to leave a little room to weld this bend this. So how are we going to bend this? Well, let's show you. I got this over here. I found another piece of pipe um, and I stuck it in the arm on my lift. I had to beat the other end up a little bit. And we'll slide this in like so. I'm not going to send it all the way in because it's difficult to get out for the moment. 
But then I can just heat this with a rosebud on my torch real quick. And just pull it. Pull it down. Put some bend in it. Then I can test fit it quickly. And if I like it, I like it. If I don't, um, then I can heat it and bend it some more. So I think this is going to be my bending fixture. And we'll just heat it and bend it. Because um, that's how we roll. Um, yeah. And then we're going to have to bend this other side. Maybe not as far. Because the, uh, the frame actually goes up at an angle. So we can keep it kind of tucked in at an angle. Not the same angle. But as soon as we get over to this area here, we're going to want to drop it so we can 45 it out the side. So, yeah. That's how it's supposed to work. We'll see how it actually works. But that's how it's supposed to work. So, I'm going to get set up. It's actually getting kind of late. I'm not sure if I really want to fire up the torch this late in the day. I usually don't like to leave the shop um, within an hour of me of using the torch or welder. It's kind of, you know, I want to be here for a little bit after we do high heat stuff. In case of a fire. But uh, anyway, that's what we're going to do. We might just uh, reconvene in the morning. All right, guys. All right, I got this piece bent. Um... It's going to come out okay. It kind of wrinkles when you heat it. Um, get it kind of in the center there. But I've got good clearance all the way around it. Coming out pretty level with the idea of the mufflers kind of going to be level so that it drops down below the frame so I can 45 out the side there. So I've got the next one bent. Yeah, it's a little ugly. Um, and this is my fixture for... <laughs> bending it because I got to heat it and pull on it. So I've got this thing, I put a, a C-clamp around my lift arm um, and I'll heat it up with the rosebud right there and then I've got this piece of pipe, just a, a scavenged piece of pipe. So I got something to pull on uh, when I get that thing red hot. So I'll show you how I bent this one and the other ones obviously are done. But this should be the rest of the heavy lifting on the, my exhaust system. So, you know, getting that header over was a major deal. Getting these bent, that's a, kind of a major deal. But hey, we figured it out how to do it. And then the rest of this should be pretty plug and play. So, let me get set up. Well, I know it doesn't seem like it, but it's actually the next day, it's Sunday. I sold uh, my 76 Ford F250 camper special yesterday. And uh, that took quite a bit of my time and uh, had to unload the camper off of it and stuff like that and uh, and I really wasn't much count for the rest of the day. It always happens when I sell something that I've kind of restored and um, you know you kind of really hate to see them go. It's kind of a, a mental block day. So we're back on the exhaust. I was going to show you how I am bending this pipe. It's not great by any means. It's very uh, unattractive, but it's getting the job done, and it's what I have. So um, the only other option would be to pie cut these and weld them. But does that look any better than that? It you know bending with a little kink in it. I don't think it's going to hurt the airflow much. Um, not enough to quit what we're doing. It's not like we have a, a you know 400 horse stroker engine or something in there. It's just uh, we'd be lucky to get you know, 240 horsepower out of this 302 um, once it's all said and done. So we're going to heat it up right here, um, which is just back from the flange, and uh, bend this again. And we're shooting for that offset. Um, kind of want the mufflers to come straight with the horizon, not necessarily with the frame because the frame goes up. Um, so we want them to come straight. So when we 45 them out, we're at about that angle. Um, we're going to go with that. So uh, let me uh, find my safety glasses and we'll get the torch fired up and uh, proceed to bend. And that'll be the last bend we have. And maybe the rest of this will go together pretty quick. Okay. I have really long poses on my torch. So it's always something to get the air out of the gas line, if you will. That first 20 seconds of... Porch time is sometimes touchy. Ah, you're up. 
amazing how fast the rosebud will heat up a pipe red hot. Look how quickly. Somewhere in that vicinity, it's gonna be pretty good. Got a little more of a kink in that one than the others, but it, it did widen out a little bit. The trick is getting it off this pipe now. I may actually have to heat up the coupling portion to get it off of there. Uh, but that is what it is. We'll put it in the vise if we have to and get that apart. But anyway, I hope that was uh, visible for you. That's what I have to work with. So we're getting her done. Getting her done. So, yeah, this one's looking good. This one will look good. And uh, we're going to slip the mufflers on. Um, that'll be where it comes apart. We're going to weld everything to the end of this offset. The muffler will slip onto here, and that will be what um, we'll have to take apart so we can get the thing in and out. Then the other half of it, the muffler, the bend, and the tailpipe um, will all be a welded assembly. All right, let me uh, work on cooling that down a little bit, and try and get that other piece of pipe off of there, and we'll start mocking it up in place. Well, we got it all mocked up, and uh, in looking at all the room that I have up here, I can fully weld this because I can get this out of here. So that's a great thing. I don't have any clamps, so I can fully weld it all the way from the header flange. Every connection can be welded. So there's my tailpipes. I run them out a little long so I can think about it. It's uh, tied up tight to the frame right now on both sides. But, and it'll need to drop down just a little bit. I got lots of room. Everywhere I had to take a little bend out of right there. It was too much bend. So uh, they've come out pretty even actually. My tailpipes were the same length. Um, they might vary by a half inch or something. But don't get a tape measure and come underneath here and measure stuff. So uh, yeah, cool. So I'm going to grab the welder and tack all this together real good and then we'll get it back up here. Notice my speaker stands I'm using for to prop the mufflers up. Use what you got, right? I got a car full of them. So um, let's get these tacked up. We'll pull them out one at a time. We'll fully weld them. We'll put them back and we'll weld some hangers on the frame right there where I got that C-clamp. I'm dropping them down an inch or so, and uh, maybe two inches, and uh, those would be great. 
I'm looking forward to hearing this thing run without uh, breaking the old eardrums. I'll catch you in a little bit. Well, boys and girls, we got her done. Got it all welded up. Like I said, fully welded. I can get it in and out just fine. Flanges are tight. Gaskets are in. Our exits are decent. Right where I wanted them to be. Again, I ran them out a little long. I'll come back and cut them when I make a decision. Probably going to be a, a straight cut this way. Like so. Um, coming out. Uh, same on both sides. I put the hanger on the outside of the frame. I didn't really want to, but yeah. Come in and cut those like that, probably. But I'll see what gets on the ground. Um, man, I am so anxious to fire this thing up if she'll run today. So uh, let me get the uh, lights cleaned up from underneath here. Put her back on the ground, and uh, let's fire it up. We'll hear it for the first time together. All right, let's see if she runs. that was a success exhaust sounds good real good so uh, so now I can focus on kind of tuning this engine uh, see what it's got in it for points I mean pop the distributor cap um, I'm gonna go ahead and order Petronics electronic ignition and a new coil um, see if there's a resistor in line. I don't see a surface mounted ballast resistor, but sometimes they use the resistor wire um, on the plus side of the coil. We'll put a meter on it to see what's up. Um, if it's got, you know, full 12 volts, then we know there's no resistor in line. Um, and that would be correct for the Pertronics. Um, so, what's next for the old Ford? Um, we got a leaky water pump. That we know. So we're going to have to replace that. Um, while we're doing that, we just will uh, replace the radiator. There's a radiator out um, that fits a slightly newer model truck with the 302 in it. Um, so the 
outlet should be in the right spot to three core aluminum with a shroud and two fans. Um, I'm going to go that route, get rid of the mechanical fan altogether. It's so far away from the radiator, it's not doing any good anyway. Um, and I just hate vehicles that uh, overheat, so um, we'll get rid of that. Um, we'll get to tuning um, the correct nuts for the uh, rocker arms are on their way. Those should arrive this week. Um, I need to bleed the brakes while I still got the lift under it. Um, probably need to work on that tomorrow. Hopefully the rear wheels are coming for it. I've actually started to kind of rub out the paint a little bit. I actually got the driver's door done because um, I want to put my logo on that. Um, I actually found a quart of Wimbledon white paint in my shop so I can do some body work and fix those bad spots. Uh, right front fender, that spot. Um, spots that just look poor. Um, we'll get those touched up and then maybe kind of repatine it a little bit. So that's kind of on the agenda. Real glad to have the exhaust done. Um, it was a little more work than I thought. I haven't done that many exhaust systems, mostly race car stuff, um, but this came out uh, just fine with the tools I had to work with. Um, yeah, we wanted to we wanted to hear it. Um, again, it's fun toy, it's a shop truck. There we go. Gang, thanks for watching, comment, subscribe, and please give me a thumbs up on the way out. So this video might uh, be seen by more than a couple people. That'd be great. And we'll see you on the next video.